All right, let's get started. Hi, I'm Ariel. Um, I'm based in New York, which is the presentation is on. Uh, my day job is a software engineer at Woven Planet, um, where we work on autonomous vehicles. Uh, in my free time, I contribute to pedestrian and cycle mapping. Um, I've been doing this for two or three years now in New York and for a couple of years before that. Um, I started because I use OSM-based apps for planning routes uh, for biking and running, um, like OSM and Gaia, um, track everything on Strava, which uses Pepbox, which uses OpenStreetMap. Um, and I know that generally, regardless of the tool for pedestrian routing or bike mapping, it's probably based on OSM. Um, um, so when I was procrastinating writing this presentation, I was wandering through a bookstore and I found um, Kevin Lynch's The Image of the City, which is apparently a seminal work on um, urban geography, which is very uh, lucky, I guess. Um, and he talks a lot about like how you can experience a city based on its its routes and um, like the built environment and how that kind of forms your image. I mean, here in Florence, you've got like the canal and all these insane churches and buildings. That's really nice to see. So um, I think about that a lot when I'm navigating through New York. Um, this presentation is based using New York as a case study just because that's where I live and there's a lot of examples, but that's not the point of this. I mean, I hope the point is that you can take some of these examples to your cities and see what best translates there. And um, another motivation is that uh, New York mobility is kind of in a state of crisis. Um, after years of pedestrian deaths going down in 2017, that trend reversed, and now deaths are going back up every year, which is terrible because we're building more bike lanes and safer streets, and it's just not quick enough. Um, for my first example of mapping, I'm going to be in that little circle if you want to follow along geographically. Um, so I open up OSM Cardo to that spot. I kind of think of what's missing, um, what's obscured. I mean, you can tell that this neighborhood is very clearly divided by this expressway. There's a train, a canal. I could probably cross it here, maybe maybe over there, um, but I can't really tell. And I know what you're thinking, why would you try to navigate with OSM Cardo, use a different layer? Um, so here's the, the bike layer, um, which does tell me I can cross here, here, and there. Um, and I can kind of see where the bike lane stops because I know the styling, um, but it's still not super clear and uh, the style doesn't help too much with pedestrian routing. Um, here's another style for good measure. Uh, I had like seven different styles, but I thought that would be too many slides to show. Um, and mobile, uh, OSMN, um, still no idea where I can cross this highway. There's just a collection of streets under there. Uh, I could probably zoom in more. Um, and no, I, I don't have routing directions on. Um, I was once uh, walking somewhere and um, hard for me to imagine as a young person, but someone handed me a piece of paper with Google Maps printed out and was like, am I going the right way? And it was a super zoomed out view with all these highways. And I was like, oh man, I don't even know where to start. Um, maybe let's go to a phone store. But um, people are going to take these maps and they are gonna try to use them for navigating whether it's the right way or not. Um, uh, so none of these sidewalks existed before I mapped them, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that process. Um, this is what it looks like when you're under it. Uh, you have to survey this area because you can't see it from satellite imagery. Um, so there's like a pedestrian refuge here and over here, and it's kind of confusing. You have no idea where the next place you can cross is just by looking because there's tons of traffic. Um, So I walked the area with a notebook. Um, I don't know if this is the best way to map, but it works for me because drawing lines on your phone and an editor is really painful. Um, field papers is also a great way to work. My printer never works when I want it to. Um, so having a notebook is great. Also when you're just inspired to map an insane intersection. 
Um, you usually always have a notebook. And through repeated field visits, you start to think of, you know, what, what did I forget to capture last time? Because I don't want to have to go back. Um, so you can flip, flip back to your old notes uh, and think about that. Um, another great technique is taking photos with uh, uh, taking photos just in general, make sure they're geotagged. Uh, Mapillary has a mobile app for uploading photos. Uh, that's helped me a lot. Um, and also through the repeated process, you kind of learn like what's important to other mappers, um, what's important to map for the models um, beyond what I just think is interesting. So now, now I have the crosswalk. I can visualize them. Um, and I can think about, you know, where can I cross the street? And that, that's where I can cross the street. Um, hopefully, one day we'll have a style that shows that on top, because it's not really useful for me to see the red highway as a pedestrian. Um, but can everyone cross the street in this scenario? No, and that's why we need curves. <laughs> um, So almost all the curbs are lowered, but there's a missing curb in that purple circle, and there's a raised curb up there. Um, so if I couldn't navigate over the curb, which um, is definitely possible, um, I'd want to go to maybe the next section because maybe taking a while to go over a curb into a very busy arterial street is a dangerous scenario. Um, and it also lets me keep track of, you know, where, where should I uh, complain to the city that they should cut a curb here? Because um, there is a marked crosswalk that uh, leads you to nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, uh, he asked if I was asking about uh, steps for accessibility. Yes, I'm talking about the the curb, um, curb cuts, uh, we spell them C-U-R-B in the U.S., but on OSM, it's K-E-R-B. Um, yeah. These, which can be in various states of distress, um, but hopefully that the angle is um, navigatable. Um, so this is kind of taking that same first intersection that there was a photo of and overlaying data. And um, there's other attributes collected, like what type of surfaces these are, how big is that refuge, um, whether or not there's uh, signals. Let's also talk about bikes a little bit. Um, I mentioned earlier that you know, this, this would be the bike route through this area. Um, and you can't really tell from the style that uh, this is a single lane and the lane kind of ends there. Um, and this is a big problem in New York and many places where the bike lane just kind of ends. Um, so in the city provided map, uh, they style it in a completely different color. Um, conveniently hidden under those two icons. Um, this is what it looks like in person. Um, I don't know if you can really read this, but really wanted to include this example because someone spray painted the truth ain't on Google Maps on this pillar. Um, we are mapping the truth <laughs> or trying to. Um, and yeah, but I mean, by mapping this as like this is where it turns into shared lane. We can kind of collect all these examples of why. Why does the infrastructure fail us in points like this, um, where the bike lane just just ends? You got to figure it out. Um, something people always ask me when I talk about sidewalks is, why don't you just tag them on the road? Um, here's the current progress of sidewalks on the road in New York. It's about a uh, million meters, I guess. Uh, probably should use kilometers, but um, they're kind of concentrated in certain certain areas. Um, 
we, we mainly map them as separate ways because we want to map curve information for uh, intersections. Um, and if you're going back and forth, uh, this is where they're mapped as separate ways. You can annoyingly see that it's almost the opposite areas. Um, so one of our challenges is kind of inflating that too. And um, technically, all of these should also have road tags that say like sidewalk equals separate. Haven't gotten there yet. You wouldn't know that unless I told you because it's not documented anywhere. Um, another challenge. Um, and uh, sidewalks are currently clustered in areas where we've kind of held projects. So you can see like those are kind of complete. That's because we did task manager things over there or uh, people happen to live, prolific OSM mappers happen to live in some of the dark red areas. Um, and then there's also parks and beaches, which are mapped well, and housing complexes, which Amazon has mapped for us. Um, you can look at the progress by year, which is kind of interesting, uh, especially for areas where um, an area was uh, heavily mapped in one year, and then looking at where the revisions are. Um, this can help us think about like which areas are being maintained. Someone map it just one time. Um, and it hasn't, and putting this together kind of gives me some hope that these areas are maintained because there are edits over the years. Um, curbs were a late addition to the mapping um, efforts in New York, I guess. Uh, we were kind of inspired by Open Sidewalks, which has this tool called Access Map, which is available in Seattle that um, helps navigate uh, based on certain conditions of um, where curbs are. Um, the city is required to install uh, curb cuts everywhere because of uh, the American uh, Disabilities Act. Um, so it's in progress. Um, there are more curbs than the city can fix within a given time. This is a problem in almost all US cities. Um, so I'm hoping with, with OSM we can kind of identify where high, high um, priority spots that maybe have been overlooked uh, without having individuals kind of complain on a case by case basis. Um, talk about a little bit um, about this area, which we mapped using the tasking manager in uh, 2021. Um, this is one way to map sidewalks is just very concentrated effort to finish out a whole area. Um, with 15 mappers, three validators, and almost 1,900 change sets, or 1,900 edits across a thousand change sets. Uh, we mapped this whole area. And we did this before curves were important, so that's kind of unfortunate. But um, having an entire area mapped to a certain level of consistency it lets us do analysis, because we know that data isn't missing. Um, so here's that entire neighborhood. Um, and it borders the park, and some of it's more residential than the rest. Um, and with this whole area mapped, we can do some analysis of like where are crosswalks missing. Um, it's a little hard to see, but the red lines are clusters of where there just aren't crosswalks. Um, this is just basic analysis. I mean, you can go crazy, you can look at crash data and things like that. I haven't gone that far yet. Um, here's here's one zoomed in spot where um, you can kind of start to think if I had to cross from here to here, there's I should cross down there because there's no safe crosswalks over here. Uh, there's no safe crosswalks on the red line. Um, we can find uh, slip lanes that are unmarked. Um, <laughs> so this is a cycleway um, on the right um, that crosses this uh, road, uh, which is a highway access ramp. And there's there's no traffic control there, um, which is kind of terrifying when you're biking through. Um, and that's something people with local knowledge would know, but also something we can find once we know that the area is mapped. Um, 
you can think of other multimodal conflict. So there's a cycleway that splits in two, and there's also a crosswalk there. So if it's a very busy day, are there a lot of cyclists and pedestrians that are kind of moving around each other, or is it fine? Um, now that we have all this data, I uh, start to think about um, pushing for change in our area. Um, so that's a, another reason I do this is because um, we're working on working on improving improving the city. Um, so the New York City uh, government has a streets master plan that's supposed to cover the next five years. Uh, they want to build 50 miles slash 80 kilometers of bike lane per year, but they only have the capacity to do 30 miles, 50 kilometers per year. Um, so they need some help prioritizing. Um, bike share last week hit a record of 130,000 rides in a single day. Um, I really think OSM is positioned to help us map areas um, as bike advocates uh, to look for areas where there isn't great mapping, um, but there isn't great bike or pedestrian coverage. Um, here's some more fun examples I've, I've come across. Um, so these two crosswalks go straight into fences on both sides. Uh, so you have to walk into the street and uh, on the right is a subway station. Um, so this is clearly like a trafficked area by pedestrians. I mean, you can see how many people are there. Um, so how do you map this? <laughs> I mapped crosswalks and then uh, into fences. Um, this is not the only place I've had to map a crosswalk pedestrian way into a fence. Um, and eventually I can query all of these cases, which unfortunately exist. Uh, this is what I call a sad bus stop, which there are unfortunately too many of. Um, something common to find through local papers is they'll post like worst city bus stop ranks. Um, and I'm kind of curious if we can map bus stops and algorithmically find out which ones are the saddest. Um, so both of these crosswalks lead to curbs and uh, grass. You just, it, it doesn't really make sense, but um, maybe that's okay for someone that's able-bodied, but um, if you if you weren't, you're, you're kind of stuck in the road, which is not, not fun uh, for anyone. Um, so I can report these things to the city and they can stay in the requested status as long as the city takes, but they're, they're part of the statistics now and thing, things are getting better um, and they're, they're documented. Uh, we also keep track of where you can't bike. Um, so we have a couple of bridges that you're not allowed to bike across, but there is a pedestrian path. Um, this one has stairs. If you're coming from the other direction, you should hope that you know there are stairs because if not, you'll just bike over them. <laughs> um, I think that's something that you know routing applications really warn about. Um, they probably won't route you over this because you're not allowed to bike there, but I mean, people are going to. One minute. Skip to fun slides. Uh, Um, another thing I think we're great at is keeping track of the status of projects. Um, so this took, I think, two years to go from the left image to the right and had no idea if they would ever put a protected uh, Jersey barrier on there. Um, the project status from the city isn't really clear. And um, they might say that it's going to look like that. So that'll be the way it looks like in the official government maps. But this is how it actually looks like for a long time. Uh, some, some things I'm looking to improve on is um, the schema for things like this. Um, I'm not really sure what to do here. <laughs> um, some people have proposed like crossing colon curb extension, right, left, both um, on the node of the crosswalk, I think. Um, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe that's not. There's been some earlier talks that have kind of covered um, what are good ideas for tag proposals and what are bad ideas. Um, How to tag these, there's like five different tags for concrete barriers in the roads. Um, hoping we can kind of get there. If it already exists, 
please find me and let me know. Um, and that's it. I just want to bike to the beach safely and hopefully can keep advocating for those routes, making it happen. Thank you, Ariel. You have a question here. Um, what tool did you use for overlaying the hidden crossings under the interstate? Ah, great question. Um, I used QGIS and I loaded the data with an extract from GeoFabric uh, using OSM to PG SQL to post GIS. Um, so QGIS mostly. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hey, thanks for that amazing talk. Um, I was pretty shocked to see that sad bus stop. I mean, that that, that it suggests that there aren't standards and um, that wouldn't happen, I'd like to think, in, in most places. Um, I'm just thinking that to road safety data. And I know that um, in the US, the, the um, number of fatalities and seriously injured in collisions has not been decreasing. And um, I've also heard that bus stops are a particular kind of hotspot where people get off the bus and then walk into the highway. Um, have you got any kind of ideas on how that could help and maybe the data that you've generated that could suggest where bus stops don't have good provision? Um, like, do you, are you thinking of comparing that data with data on uh, road traffic casualties? Because I think that could be a really interesting research study. Yeah, um, I think it's too much work for one person, so I try to focus on the mapping and telling people that do work in that area, here's data you can use. Um, but yeah, I, I think it, it does help power that analysis of, you know, what's a safe area, what's not a safe area. And hopefully we can fix these things before people literally die. Yeah, my question is kind of related. I'm wondering if you had thought about um, looking at standards compliance and some of the examples that you've shared, because I think that some of the examples may be that they were perfectly standards compliant when they were built, maybe 50 years ago when we were optimizing for vehicular movement, but now we have a much more multimodal view of how we should provide transportation. So I'm wondering if you could partner up, now that I'm now that you just said you're focusing on the mapping aspects, I wonder if you could poke, partner up with an urban planner or somebody who would be more interested in doing that policy analysis so you could flag like which places were currently out of compliance with the, the standards that we're um, applying today. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, we would definitely like to bring things up to date. Um, we had some talks with the Department of Transit because um, they're trying to put more bike racks everywhere, but um, the city doesn't actually know where all their bike racks are, which is a great use case for OpenStreetMap. Hi, what can we do as the authors of bike maps and bike routers to help people get around New York City more safely? Is the stuff that we should be doing that um, you've put in your maps that we're not currently uh, making good use of? Um, I, I think we do need to open that, that two-way dialogue. I haven't felt the sidewalk coverage is there yet, I guess, to start that. Um, and I also don't know how much time, like, I have, or we personally have the volunteers to kind of respond to those things, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't just start talking about things. Um, I think the New York community is very reasonable and uh, prioritizes kind of consistency, but we kind of guess sometimes what the data consumers want. Um, so yeah, happy to talk. <laughs> Uh, do you think any of this could be automated using like imagery captured on driving cars, especially the bike lanes and maybe the curb cuts, things of that nature? Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of it can be captured um, and done in a way more automated process because this does take a long time to map by hand. Um, there, there actually is a city provided data set of the sidewalks, um, but it's it's polygons and um, you know, Im importing is its own challenge and kind of everything needs to be reviewed anyway, but that doesn't mean we can't start from there. We just haven't gotten there yet. Uh, 
So I loved, uh, loved every slide of your presentation. It's always refreshing to see people who just go out and map. <laughs> um, you started uh, your talk with uh, mapping a uh, bicycle junction in New York. I wanted to know how much time did it take to make the junction and does this time pay off? Um, no. I'm not sure exactly how far I walked and how long it took. I mean, I, I was distracted at um, like eight in the middle. You know, it wasn't really a uh, efficient trip. Um, I have found it, it can be kind of, uh, if you're not comfortable in public, like staring at the ground and writing notes, you can be a little nervous. So I have a high vis vest now, um, which lets me blend in um, maybe an hour or two to cover a mile, I guess. Thank you. Uh, excellent presentation. Uh, how do you account for New York being a city that obsessively maps every single tree in the city, but doesn't map the more safety related uh, features that you're mapping? Um, yeah, yeah, that, that's definitely a problem. I mean, people map what they're interested in. Um, something I didn't get to talk about is there's a lot of, I guess, tourist mapping. Um, people that come and visit and they're like, oh, we want to contribute, but we don't know where. Um, I think we could make better use of maybe city specific street complete quests, um, a better city wiki um, to kind of guide people who have a lot of a lot of energy and time and in, in the directions that produce the data we hope we hope we can have. I was wondering, it sounds like you've been talking to some of the folks in the city itself. Um, did you reach out to them? Did they reach out to you? And do you have any tips for other people who might be mapping similar stuff who want to work with uh, city council? Because that seems like a big challenge. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it wasn't me personally that started the conversation. There's uh, government adjacent um, technology groups that kind of help out. Um, so we, we approached them. Um, Guillaume has moved to New York and has a lot of experience bothering people in the government. Um, but I mean, there's there's definitely different levels. Before you go to the mayor, you can start with very small like city council group and see what 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 do they need mapped. And um, it can be a slippery slope for volunteering like hours. So, you know. Thank you. Uh, to, to also answer the last question, uh, I recommend not putting people on the spot. Uh, reach out in a friendly way. Say, hey, I'm concerned about something in my neighborhood uh, instead of going public right away and, and making it look like you're trying to blame them from, for all the problems in the city. And then if that doesn't work, absolutely do go to the press and, and Cool. Um, just a quick shout out to the local community. Um, everyone that's ever presented about this stuff, I watched them all. Um, the sidewalks, bicycle channels, and the OSM Slack, and anyone that walks anywhere, hopefully, use these maps. And my cat that is upset I'm not mapping at home right now. <laughs> 